The Lord be with you. Welcome to our worship on this fourth Sunday of Easter. Traditionally, this is Good Shepherd Sunday. We focus on our Good Shepherd who cares for us and guides us and leads us through this veil of tears to himself. We ask God's blessing on our time together. Our opening hymn is, for, is hymn number 710 in Lutheran service book, The Lord's My Shepherd I'll Not Want. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is, he is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. <coughs> Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that, that we, we are, are by nature sinful and unclean. We, we have, have sinned, sinned against you in thought, word, word and deed, by what we have done, done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. To those who, who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them the Holy Spirit. May the Lord who has begun this good work in us bring it to completion in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He, he is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, 
and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Amen. We sing him 477, Alleluia, Alleluia, hearts to heaven. <laughs> be with you. And with you. Let us pray. <laughs> Almighty God, merciful Father, since you have awakened from death the shepherd of your sheep, grant us, your Holy Spirit, that when we hear the voice of our shepherd, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel for the fourth Sunday of Easter is the Gospel according to St. John, the tenth chapter. Jesus said, Truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in by another way, that man is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the gatekeeper opens. The sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. A stranger they will not follow, but they will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of the strangers. This figure of speech Jesus used with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So Jesus again said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. This thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life, and have it abundantly. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. God has made us his own people by our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, 
born of the Virgin Virgin Mary, suffered suffered under under Pontius Pontius Pilate, Pilate, was was crucified, crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Good Shepherd, our Lord Jesus Christ, who is risen from the dead. Verse 6 of Psalm 23 is the focus of our meditation this day. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. There's a key word in this verse. It's, the word in Hebrew is yirdapuni. Now let me dissect that a little bit for you. Yirdapuni is the call imperfect, third person, masculine, plural, conjugation of the word radap. And it has a first person singular particle attached to the end. Now I know that completely helps you in understanding what I just said. Because the meaning of the verb radap is pretty straightforward. Radap means pursue. Now, if I haven't already piqued your interest, you need to wake up, because this is pretty important stuff. Here's the deal. In Psalm 23, the word in Hebrew, yirdapuni, is translated by most translators, shall follow me. The word describes what it is that goodness and mercy are doing. So, what would the Latham translation of verse 6 be in the psalm? Here it is. Goodness and mercy will, Yerdapuni, will pursue me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That's right. You and I are in big trouble. Goodness and mercy are coming for you. And they are absolutely relentless. They will not stop, they will not be pushed aside, and you will not escape from them. Goodness and mercy, you see, have picked up your scent. And they are bound and determined that they are going to have their way with you. So, my friends, if I were you, I would simply save my breath and stop running. Let that dynamic duo catch you. Why put off the inevitable? In the end, giving in would probably save you and me a whole lot of trouble. But I know you because I know myself, and who am I kidding? I'm not going to give in. I'll just run harder. 
I'll make my strides longer, I'll train more aggressively, I'll become more disciplined, because I firmly believe that if I work hard enough, I just might be able to leave goodness and mercy in the dust. All I need is a can-do attitude. Now isn't that the way it is with all of us? God sends his goodness and mercy after us. They run us down, they knock us over, they maul us with every blessing imaginable. They set the table with a feast. They try to pour an entire bottle of wine into our glass. They destroy our enemies and protect us from those who hate us. And we run. We try to jump into every ravine. We dash our bodies upon the rocks. We slash our arms so that the wolves and bears will get the scent of our blood. We do everything we possibly can to escape the good things that God sends after us. Goodness and mercy pursue us at the very beginning of the service, and we spend the rest of the service trying our best to escape. God sends his forgiveness to us in the absolution, and we begin thinking to ourselves, how can that man standing up there forgive our sins? Because we're thinking about that one sin we're so absolutely sure it's too bad to ever be forgiven, and we try to hold that sin outside of the Lord's mercy. God sends his forgiveness again as we ask for it in the Kyrie, sing for it in the hymn of praise, rejoice in it in the collect, and hear it in the readings from the Scripture. We find that there's nowhere to run, nowhere we can hide, no matter what we do, God's mercy is always present in the liturgy. We just can't get away from it, but we sure do try. We check out the latest Facebook posts on our smartphones. We text each other about how dumb the pastor's jokes are. We, we test our skill at sleeping with our eyes wide open. We think about where we're going to go for lunch after the service. And then comes the sermon, and the law leaves us dead in our sins. It wakes our guilt and makes us bow before the Lord in contrition and terror. But then goodness and mercy, they come at us again. Jesus, nailed to the cross for you. And as a result, your sin forgiven, your death killed, the power of the devil destroyed, and the result, life for you, peace for you, innocence for you. And what do we do? We check our email. We enter REM sleep for the second time in the service. We wonder when the pastor's finally going to get to his point, and we say, oh, come on, pastor, it can't be that easy, can it? And we dodge and we duck. And goodness and mercy are relentless. They keep coming at us. We manage to slip away, we think. But the Lord's goodness and mercy are relentless. They come at us again from his table. He gives us his body to eat and his blood to drink. We try to defend ourselves from the forgiveness, life, and salvation that we're being offered there. We use doubt as a defense. And we ask did God really say that this is his body? Does he really mean that this is his blood? Can eating a bit of wheat and drinking a sip of wine really turn sinners like us into saints who are holy and blessed before the Lord and creator of the universe? The answer, of course, is absolutely yes. And even faith as a mustard seed will receive all of the blessings that are pursuing you in the supper. For in the supper, our Lord catches us in a way that we can avoid only through the most stubborn unbelief. You see, the reason, the reason that we run from God's goodness and mercy many times is that we don't want to admit that we have a great need for it. We don't even want to think that we might be wretched enough to be forgiven. We we want that cross to be for someone else, maybe someone a couple of pews away, maybe someone who's not in church, maybe 
the guy down the block, who we've heard stories about, people like that, yeah, they're the ones who need forgiveness. Goodness and mercy, they don't need to waste their time on us. We're doing very well. Thank you very much. My sisters and brothers, no, we're not. Truth of the matter is, we are so far down in the muck that we can't even see it. Our situation is so dire that we can't even see the bloody cross that is right in front of us, proclaiming that God's wrath has, in fact, been turned aside and that we are forgiven and that we are free. You see, sin, our sinfulness, numbs us to reality. And we get so used to the misery that we run away from that which could put an end to it. We like the disease so much that we turn aside the cure. We convince ourselves that that's just the way the world works. It's, it's natural. It's normal. It's the way it is. And we wonder if we could ever fight against nature because we know deep down we can't possibly win. And that's right. We can't win, but God can and does. We can't rescue ourselves from this body of death, but Jesus already has. You see, our good shepherd has come to the ravine and lifted us up. He has smitten the wolf with his sling and slain the bear with his staff. And our Lord Jesus is absolutely dogged in his pursuit of those for whom he died. He never gives up. He never surrenders. He never stops until he has shown us the depth of our sin and brought us out of our self-chosen purgatory at the cost of his own precious blood and his innocent sufferings and death. Do you get it now? It's Jesus who pursues you. When I said the Lord's goodness and mercy were coming for you, I didn't mean some vague feeling of well-being and forgiveness. God doesn't work that way. He doesn't give theoretical well-being. He doesn't win imaginary health for you. Jesus is goodness and mercy made flesh. He is goodness and mercy with bone connected to bone. He is goodness, goodness with sinews and mercy with skin on, and he is filled with the Holy Spirit, the very breath of life, and he is the one who comes at you with all his gifts, everything that he won for you on the cross. He took your sin, your fear, and even your hatred of him. He suffered what you deserve on that cross. He paid the price you couldn't pay so that you could receive what you could never earn. People loved by God, you can't escape. Jesus is coming. He's coming for you. He is waiting for the full number of the elect to receive the gift of faith, and then he will descend on the clouds, and the dead in him will rise first, and we who are alive will meet him in the air. His goodness and mercy will have their way with you, and we will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. It is sure, it is certain, it is every bit as much of a done deal as our Lord's death and resurrection for us are. One word of advice. Stop running, dear Christian friends. Let Jesus catch you. In the name of Jesus, amen. Bidden by our shepherd, let us come before his throne of grace in prayer on behalf of all people according to their needs. Lord Jesus, blessed shepherd, you established your church with your sacrificial death and mighty resurrection. Grant us devotion that we may abide in the teaching of the apostles and honor the fellowship of the church. Guard us against all enemies of your word and keep within us the care of your flock and your staff forevermore. Mighty shepherd, you hold in your hands all the might of man, and you hold accountable those who would govern your people. Grant to us good government and good leaders who will honor your purpose, protect your people, serve the cause of justice, and defend our liberty against all threats. Give them wisdom and moderation in their pandemic response. 
loving shepherd, you love the world enough to shed your blood. And you desire that all would be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. Inspire and equip your church with her ministers to speak faithfully and boldly your word. Bless all those who serve us on your behalf. Bless us especially when we are persecuted for the faith or suffer for the sake of the good that honors you and is obedient to your word. Merciful shepherd, your wounds are our healing and your voice calls us to you in time of need. Hear us on behalf of all of those who suffer in body or mind, who grieve those whom they love and to whom death draws near. Grant them healing according to your will, grace to sustain them in the day of trouble, hope to renew life now and life forever. Be with the unemployed and the distraught and the return them to health and livelihood. Gracious shepherd, you seek out those who have fallen and you restore the sinner to repentance. Send your spirit to rekindle faith in the hearts of those who have fallen away from the truth or who have been overcome by temptation and sin. Bring good from ill and increase in all the hunger for your word and recognition of our need that many may be gathered into your flock when church doors are opened wide once more. O Lord Jesus, our loving shepherd, you have not withheld anything from us, but you emptied yourself fully upon the cross that we might be saved. Move our hearts to such devotion and teach us such generosity that we may bring to you the tithes and offerings of a grateful heart and serve our neighbor in need with the resources you have supplied to us so abundantly. Good shepherd, you set your table among us in the presence of our enemies. Hear us because we are beset by so many false voices and tempted by so many false gospels. Help us to hear your voice and to abide safely in your word. Equip us with your spirit so that we may receive your body and blood with faith and a repentant heart once we gather together again. O great shepherd, we pray you to hear your sheep and answer our prayers with mercy, granting us those things profitable for us and our salvation and keeping from us all things harmful. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Hear us, O Lord, in the words you have given us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Our closing hymn is hymn 735, Have No Fear, Little Flock.